Now to the future for big pharma and biotech. Moderna generated over $18 billion in COVID-19 vaccine sales last year, but the focus for the group seems to be increasingly on sales beyond the pandemic. A new era in vaccinology looks to be adding to that strategy. The company has announced a collaboration with Life Edit Therapeutics to enable the discovery of new mRNA editing therapies. Its CEO has made this focus no secret. He's already touted plans to have an mRNA facility on every continent to boost pandemic growth. Now, last week, it also reported mixed results in a study into an mRNA flu vaccine candidate. Shares did take a hit on the announcement. Meanwhile, flagship pioneering, founded by Moderna's co-founder, Nubar Afayan, has its sights set on a new segment, agriculture. Well, joining us now is Nubar Afayan, Moderna co-founder and CEO of Flagship Pioneering. He joins us alongside Yahoo Finance's Anjali Kemlani. Thank you for joining us this morning. I do first want to start with Moderna, obviously an incredible game changer with its mRNA technology. Talk about where the company goes from here in terms of advancing on that and investments in that space versus, say, other parts of the business. Sure. Well, good morning and thanks for having me. Uh, Yes, Moderna has pioneered a platform that allows a, a class of molecules that exist in nature called mRNA to become the future of medicines. Uh, And we've shown that in the case of vaccines, but more and more, we're also showing it in many other applications where we can use these to to conduct therapeutic, uh, to show therapeutic activity. So we're working actively in cancer, we're working in autoimmune diseases, we're working in rare genetic diseases, and steadily we're, we're generating human clinical data that proves out that this approach is broadly applicable. Of course, we're also continuing to work in vaccines where we have over 20 uh, programs active. And, and the most recent data that, 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 that the company put out, one in RSV and, uh, and another respiratory infectious disease uh, beyond COVID, uh, as well as in, in personalized cancer vaccines, uh, uh, show some very interesting first of its kind results. We also working on flu uh, and seasonal flu. So we expect all of this to really uh, create a new future where we have programmable medicines that can be rapidly deployed against any number of unmet medical needs. Absolutely, and especially building on that technology for therapies themselves, to your point, an interesting area. Nubar, I know that we want to get to your ag portfolio, but just really quickly on Moderna for a second, uh, one of the things really that has really caught the attention is the pricing of the vaccines, first setting the price at over $100 and then saying that it's going to be kept free. Can you walk us through sort of the thought process of uh, why you've landed on and why the company has landed on keeping vaccines free for COVID? Actually, I think the, the, the company has, has, has already publicly announced its programs to, to make sure that anyone who is uninsured has access uh, through our uh, special program. And so this notion that the vaccine Will be will be costly to people who are uninsured, which has been one of the things that have been raised out. Is, is something that we've already addressed. Otherwise, I think uh, you should just follow the company's own announcements, having to do with how they think about value, how they think about price, and and uh, I think it'll be more and more clear that we're thinking of this as a long-term business. And definitely something else uh, that is a part of the long-term business is looking at, you know, where it started. There was definitely a lot of government collaboration to get to this point. That's going to be a point of interest next month when Stefan speaks in front of Congress. Can you give us a little bit of insight into sort of how you're thinking about what will basically be discussed at this uh, at the Senate testimony next month? Um, it's no secret that Moderna has enjoyed a, a very strong collaboration with many, many groups, uh, in addition to the roughly $5 billion of capital that it secured over, over a decade of platform development and the corporate partnerships that we did with multiple very, very capable uh, uh, pharmaceutical companies. We also had partnerships with government colleagues, whether it was from BARDA or DARPA or the NIH, some scientific, some clinical, some purely financial and that continued and set us up in during COVID to be able to do what is, but I think by any measure is quite an unexpected feat, which is to be able to not only develop and produce and supply a vaccine, but do so in less than a year. And then the next year, scale it up to a billion doses. Uh, the team at Moderna is very proud of that. It's poised to continue to do that in many other disease areas. And we look forward to continuing to collaborate with not only the US government, but every other 
government out there as we expand our reach, as our, we start constructing plants in different continents, as was mentioned earlier. And, and I think that uh, we're, we're very uh, aware of our responsibilities to communicate, to explain our, our strategies, and, and we look forward to doing that every chance we have. And Nuba, I know that you focus a lot on human health and sustainability as, as part of the types of businesses that you tend to approach. So as part of flagship pioneering, I know that Inari is a seed design company that comes um, under this umbrella. What, talk about what this company does and how it does it differently from some of these other seed companies that use GMOs. Uh, absolutely. And so it's interesting in that the field of biology, which is really the study of life, <clears throat> actually offers opportunities to take learnings from one aspect of, 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 the, of life, which is to do with health, human health, and apply it to other areas. Sometimes people think about animal health, and in our case, we also think about agricultural health. And so it turns out that the health of plants and what affects them is very, very important in the yield of crops, the, the various traits that one is looking for. And so we took a health-based approach to looking at uh, seed design, to looking at many other aspects of agriculture and, and, and Inari in particular, the company you mentioned, is really a pioneer in applying technologies that were developed to be applied primarily to human health into agriculture. In this particular case, what's called multiplex gene editing, which is something that we have perfected and shown for the first time, can give us much, much more dramatic improvements in yield, in, in the kind of traits that one wants through breeding. And we think that this approach not only is applicable to, to improving uh, agricultural output, but also minimizing the resource utilization, whether it's water, whether it's fertilizers, et cetera. So this is a very exciting development in that by looking at adjacencies of the science we're already doing, we're able to impact the planet in more than just one way, in this case, planetary health instead of human health. Well, it is also related to planet uh, to human health, isn't it, Nubar? Because I know that in the health industry at large, there's been a lot of discussion about uh, food and the access to it. And I know now you're developing this portfolio of different uh, companies that help with agriculture in some way, including Indigo, Inari, Invio, and Sibo. Tell me about why the interest in these. They do different things in terms of helping farmers mm -hmm. uh, create sustainability and, and move to sustainable farming at a time that we are right now what's the concern that you're looking at or why why get into agriculture right now well you know the the way the nature of our business is such that like moderna which we founded in 2010 these were companies that were founded in 2013 15 16 the ones you just mentioned and only now are they beginning to appear as potentially impactful uh to some important uh global challenges so so the logic is the following um, when you look at some of the big unmet needs challenges on the, on the planet and the ones that advances and in innovations could address, we found that in agriculture, there is some real stresses out there. And, and of course, it starts from food insecurity. Uh, we just, you know, give, given populations on the planet and the inequity with which people have access to a reliable supply of food, how we do agriculture matters there. The resource depletion that agriculture is causing, uh, all of these things can be taken into account in designing a next generation of technologies. And in our case, these are heavily based on our knowledge of life science and biology. So for example, the company Indigo, which is the, which is the oldest company in this space we have, so over eight years old now, really started out by developing microbial treatments, biological treatments of seed to be able to enhance their traits. So it's a different approach than manipulating the genes of, a, of, of seeds. And through that starting point, we actually started learning about new opportunities, and that is particularly in the carbon space. So when you think about agriculture, you may not think that it has a lot to do with carbon, and yet there is an opportunity, which we're developing at scale now, to help to get farmers to help us keep carbon in the soil, as opposed to emitting that carbon in the way they do agriculture. Now, for them to change their approach, which is called regenerative farming, we realized that they need help. They need technologies. They need measurement approaches so that they could literally capture carbon, keep it in the soil, and then measure it, certify it, and then make that into a carbon credit. All of that value chain is something that Indigo invented and is actually now making available. Last year in 2022 was the very first time farmers 
benefited from being able to generate carbon credits through this program. That now has scaled to about 6 million acres of, of, of partners that we've uh, successfully recruited into Indigo's plan. Mm. So you might say, you know, this is going from molecular approaches to bacteria, to seeds, to carbon. And, you know, we're, we're, we think that some of the big problems on the planet are going to benefit from the revolution that's going on in applied biology. And we and right. others are looking to make this uh, impactful. Anuba, as, as we bring it back to, to human life, obviously a neurodegenerative disease is something that's near and dear to a lot of people. Um, talk about what you're doing with Denali Therapeutics and, and the impact that you're hoping to make and the investments in this space. Uh, Denali is also at the forefront of that field. It's, it's a company that we had the, the great pleasure of helping the team co-found and, and, and develop over many years. And they really, at a, at a time when people had kind of given up on neurodegenerative diseases, they made some bold scientific leaps to, to really think about how to get medicines to where they need to act, particularly in the brain and, and how to cross blood brain barriers and how to find the right targets to be able to, to address. It's very difficult. It has been difficult in the neurodegenerative disease to identify unique targets that can be that can be medicinally activated or deactivated. So Denali has, has 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 invested a significant amount of clinical infrastructure to be able to take multiple programs in the clinic, and we are quite uh, hopeful that that those programs, as they advance, will create a new uh, generation of medicines that break open the neurodegenerative field. Uh, and 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 we think that it's time that we do this. Patients have a desperate need for this. Indeed. I do appreciate you joining us for this wide-ranging interview. It's been a pleasure. Nubar Athayan, Moderna co-founder and flagship pioneering CEO, and Yahoo Finance's Anjali Kemlani. Thank you for your time this morning.